Og pariah regime. Uh, they're terrorists. They're they're brutal. There's no sense to anything here. They're, uh, this, they've crossed a line with my son Otto, and so you, it, would be, it would be very difficult to look for a lesson here amongst this insanity. That was your interview last week with Fred Warmbier at his house outside Cincinnati. We have a sad and final update to bring you on his son Otto. He is, of course, the American college student in prison for a year in North Korea. Otto died this afternoon in a hospital in Cincinnati. Six days after his release, he was murdered by the North Korean regime. Otto's parents, Fred and Cindy Warmby, released a statement. We want to read part of it to you. It says this. It is our sad duty to report that our son Otto Warmby has completed his journey home. It would be easy in a moment like this to focus on all that we lost, a future time that won't be spent with a warm, engaging, brilliant young man, whose curiosity and enthusiasm for life knew no bounds. But we chose to focus on the time we were given to be with this remarkable person. When Otto returned to Cincinnati late on June 13th, he was unable to speak, unable to see, unable to react, to hear verbal commands. He looked very uncomfortable, almost anguished. Although we would never hear his voice again, within a day, the countenance of his face changed. He was at peace. He was home, and we believe he could sense that. We thank everyone around the world who has kept him and our family in their thoughts and prayers. We are at peace and at home, too. Ah, heartbreaking. They are good people, the warm beers. You can hear it in their words. It's real. And we feel for them deeply tonight. Well, President Trump delivered a statement on Otto's death condemning the North Korean regime. Here's part of what he said. He spent a year and a half in North Korea. A lot of bad things happened. But at least we got him home to be with his parents. It's a brutal regime. And we'll be able to handle it. Otto may have died this year, but his arrest in North Korea happened in the final year of the last administration. His death was, to some extent, a failure of Obama's foreign policy, and it was not the only one. Ben Collins is a U.S. Army Special Forces veteran, and he joins us tonight. Um, so, Ben... You, know, I, you don't want to draw quick and easy lessons from these things that are unfair. On the other hand, you do sort of wonder, you know, he spent an awful long time in captivity when the Obama State Department did, in effect, nothing other than lecture his parents for sending him to North Korea in the first place. Did that reflect the foreign policy objectives or priorities of the last administration? Well, Tucker, I think so. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, if, if there was anything that we could count on the Obama administration to do, it was to essentially certainly do nothing in the places that it mattered and certainly go uh, another way on the place in areas that, you know, unfortunately made things worse. Um, you know, uh, as you said, this is heartbreaking. Uh, you know, we have to remember that there are, there are still several Americans, I think three Americans that are still in North Korea that are, that are held captive. Um, and, and so, you know, this, the, this administration is going to have to continue to fight to get uh, our people home. Um, but, uh, you know, it is, a, it is a tough thing that we're trying to do with North Korea right now, but the Obama administration certainly yeah. didn't make it any easier by giving them a pass for eight years. Syria is an open wound uh, that's been causing problems for, you know, a long time, more than five years now. Certainly. Um, and now, all of a sudden, we appear, the United States, under the Trump administration, appears to be moving towards some kind of conflict with Russia over this. What exactly is our objective in Syria? How is this helping America's interests? So, I, I mean, I think we do, you do have to look back uh, on certainly what uh, the Obama administration did. And it was, they, they took a situation that was already complex and just certainly made it worse. I mean, if you look at it, we first backed the Kurds uh, in order to, to fight ISIS. And we were conducting, you know, air, uh, an air campaign. So we first backed the Kurds. Uh, but then essentially we were backing Saudi Arabia and what they were doing in Yemen, which irritated Iran. So we tried to appease Iran. We gave them a nuclear deal, which then ended up uh, upsetting Israel. So then we just sold Israel uh, a bunch of weapons as well. I mean, we've essentially kicked off uh, an arms race even worse. But the whole thing was so discombobulated, they were never able to actually say, what are the U.S. strategic interests in Syria? Here is what a feasible end state could be, and here's how we are going to accomplish it. So unfortunately, President Trump got stuck with this, uh, but there is no easy way out at this stage. And as you say, we see that we just shot down a, a plane, a, a Syrian plane, that could almost as easy have been a Russian plane, and I'm, I'm concerned about where that might take us. Yeah, there's an understatement of the evening. So let's just make it simple. I mean, 
I, I don't think anybody has confidence in the ability of any outside power, including ours, to construct a viable new government in Syria. So let's just start with our, our enemies. Who should we be most concerned about within the borders of Syria? Who's our primary enemy here? Well, so there's, to, to me, there's long-term and there's short-term, Tucker. In short-term, it's the jihadist threat that exists because every day that they are allowed to have territory, every day that they are allowed to legally tax their people, they're allowed to legally sell, you know, gray market oil and make money and push their ideology, we see more and more attacks and they're, they're, they are able to recruit more and more people to their cause. That is the short-term threat right now. I do think that the long-term threat to our strategic uh, capability is going to be because of, uh, is going to be Russia in that region. President Obama backed us away from that, that uh, role in, 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 uh, as the region power. Russia has stepped in and that very well could, could minimize our ability for, uh, you know, certainly from everything from energy. But the bottom line is all of that Obama administration policies, all of Hillary Clinton's policies effectively just made the region worse. It, it funneled all the, that migrant problem into Europe and we've seen the consequences of that. So we, we, we've got a big problem on our hands right now, and I think President yeah. Trump, has, you know, he, he's doing the best he can with what he gave us so, or what he was left with so far. God, I'm, I'm more confused than I've ever been. Ben, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, Tucker.